Guys, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach, and this is the NEC Tips for the Field. So we're changing the layout on our titles to help serve you better. So if you see in the title 2017, that means it applies only to the 2017 code. If you see 2017-2020, it applies to both cycles uh, without change. And also, if you see 2020, it applies only to the 2020. That way, you guys can be learning the 17 if you're on it right now, but also be prepared if you ever change to the 20. Today, we're in the 2017, but you can check the title to see if it applies to both. And we're on page 85 if you'd like to highlight this part. And what we're dealing with, where we find ourselves today, is in Article 230.24. So we're de and in Part B, we're dealing with vertical clearances for overhead service conductors. So these are conductors that are coming either from the utility pole to your service riser or the utility pole to another pole that you've installed. And these codes would apply all the way until you reach the attachment point. All right, so for how this is laid out, I believe it's got five parts, uh, only a few of them we use, you know, regularly. Uh, it will lay out the feet requirement, and then it'll kind of let you know about that area. So the first one says 10 feet, which seems awfully low, um, and I agree that it's low, but it's code compliant. And it's for areas that are above areas that are sidewalks accessible only to pedestrians measured from the final grade or other accessible surfaces. So there's a couple things that we really gotta watch here. So this is areas where you can only walk, or sidewalks, or you know a side yard, or a backyard, where you cannot pull a vehicle in. There's no paved driveway, or gravel driveway, or no obvious path that people are beating. Like if there's two tracks, I don't know what you guys call it in your area, we call it two tracking in Jeeps and stuff like that. If there's two tracks where cars have been driving, that's not gonna apply to this part. This is for areas only for walking. And the other thing that we have to watch in this part is that this is off of any platform that you can reach in the direct line of those conductors. So if there's like a knee wall where you could stand on that and reach the conductors, you have to do 10 feet from that knee wall. Or if there's a platform or a rise or even a hill in the yard, it has to be from... You know, that has to be the lowest point at any given point on that uh, service drop. Uh, excuse me, on the yeah, on the service drop. I was getting ready to service ladder. I'd be underground. Um, on that service drop, its entire length, the minimum can be 10 feet if it's subject for walking only. Let's look at part two here. So part two says 12 feet. And this is over residential property and driveways. So anywhere over the residential property that did not fall in group one and on driveways for residential, it's only required to be 12 feet. And those commercial areas uh, that are not subject to truck traffic, which is really vague and open for. Now, I suppose if there was like a, you know, part of a building that was stopping truck traffic from coming in, or if it said no trucks, you could really bank on that. But honestly, if you're going to be on a commercial property, your inspector's probably going to want it 18 feet unless there is a way that made it, it fixed it so trucks could not come in there. And it may not be wide enough for trucks, whatever, but uh, 12 feet according to the code, but that's really going to be open uh, to interpretation. And we're going to learn that about in that about that in part four. So this has to do with 300 volts to ground or less. It's going to change in part three. Okay, that's any one leg to ground. You always have to keep that in mind. This part is 150 volts or less, any pretty much residential service. So that is any one leg to ground. That would also cover uh, 12208. It's it's any individual one leg to ground. Also, this is also one leg to ground. So 120 volts, that would be under the 150 volt threshold for part one. So we're good to go. All right, let's go ahead and flip over here. And let's flip to part three. So part three is real short and sweet. It says you have to do 15 foot in those areas that are listed in the 12 foot area where the voltages exceed 300 volts to ground. Pretty self-explanatory. And then here at 18 feet, this is going to be where any over public street, alley, road, parking areas subject to truck traffic, which is really open to interpretation. So if you are in a parking area and you could call... Uh, you know, you could call a driveway on a residence a parking area and come back and your inspector say, hey, I think this driveway is subject to truck traffic and then they're required to be 18 feet. If I'm over a residential driveway and I'm planning it, you know, I'm going to shoot for 18 feet, you know, based off the way I build my service. But if it's already there and existing, it's one of those things that, you know, it is code compliant, but is somebody going to rip the service down? You also can look practically and say, hey, it's been here for 35 years. Nobody's ripped it down yet. You know, 
What's the harm at this point? So if it's code compliant. All right, and then it also says driveways other than residential properties. Now, this is a really important one. And the reason is, is because we can get caught up in the word driveway and think, oh, driveway 12 feet. So any driveway anywhere that's not on a residential property it's going to be required to be 18 feet. That's a good one to remember. And other lands such as cultivated, grazed forests or orchards. So a lot of this is just practical. If you think there's going to be trucks, if you think there's going to be farming equipment, concrete trucks, any type of backhoe, track hoe, whatever, if you think any of that type of equipment is going to go through this area, then you're going to want to make sure that that service is 18 feet in the air. Now, part five is a really cool one. I've never dealt with it, but I would love to hear in the comments if any of you guys have ever seen a service that passes over tracks of railroads. That would be really cool. And you're required to hit 24 and a half feet. They must have, you know, they know the measurements. That's going to clear any size train, double decker or whatever. But that's just a really cool part of the code. Guys, this has been the NEC tips for the field. This is a really important one. Uh, and what's funny about these things, I, I don't know if you're like this, but when I learn something, I face it within the next few days. I'll have a colleague or one of you guys call me, um, and I consider you guys my colleagues and you know uh, my friends, and I'm just so thankful we're getting feedback from all over the United States that people are getting their license and their lives are being changed, and I just I feed off of that more than anything than you guys know. So if you if this is helping you, please let you don't have to you don't have to say it in the comments if you don't want. You can drop me an email or, or whatever. I would love to help you and serve you in any way I can, but. Uh, this is one of the codes that you guys really need to know, and it's funny, you'll probably see it here in the next few days. That ha That's how it happens to me. One of you guys will get a hold of me, and then a couple days later, and it's kind of an odd thing that I haven't been thinking about, a couple days later, I see it out in the field, and it's almost like I get to be a pro about it because it's fresh on my mind. So I hope this comes out in the field for you. This is the NEC tips for the field. If you see 2017-2020, this applies to both codes without change, and please like and subscribe. Let's get to it.